Now, as Christians celebrate Easter, governors, senators and other prominent individuals have urged the Nigerians not to lose hope in the face of the economic challenges in the country. And in their various Easter messages on Sunday, they expressed confidence that economic reforms being implemented by President Bola Tinubu would soon end hardship in the country. Let me start with you. I don't want to say about Didi because I don't remember. <laughs> Didi is my, my, my right hand side. <laughs> but let me start with you on this matter because, you know, many Nigerians are so impatient right now. Yeah. And hearing this message is more like, we are tired of hearing this. Please, we need results. We cannot be telling us things will end soon. When? Let's know when. When is this ending soon? How optimistic are you by these messages that Nigerians, the sufferings that we're going through right now would end soon? How optimistic? Let's be realistic in this sense. Highly optimistic, honestly. Highly optimistic. Because, you know, in Nigeria of, of before, um, and I hope we won't continue that way. Mm. When things go up, they don't come down. Yeah. So I, I now quickly use the case study of this present dollar that, is, that the Naira is gaining so much against the dollar now. And, you know, in January, like we, BKO said earlier, it was, it was over 2,000 Naira to a dollar. Unprecedented. Mm -hmm. But now... In February, it went to 1,900 plus. But right now, it's um, dangling between 1,001 something and 1,200 plus. It's magical. I have to be sincere with this. So with this, I have a very high hope that uh, things will really get better. I think Ashiwa Juice has really rolled up his sleeves and um, he's doing a lot to see that it shocks off where the problems are really biting. Although, like I was discussing with um, one of my mentors um, two days back, mm. and we were saying, well, the dollar crashing uh, has really not affected the, the prices in the market, the food price and all that. And uh, but I was saying that, yes, when you go to those who sell, they will tell you that they are still selling old stock. Yeah. They'll tell you it's the old stock and um, that it's after they finish the so this, you know, But the is. same market people will quickly increase the price when dollar goes up. <laughs> and with the old stock, mm. they won't sell at old rate. No. They will sell, and they will tell you that um, when they sell at old stock with the old stock price, they won't be able to buy at the new rate. But that makes that. logical sense, doesn't it? Well, it depends. It depends on how you see it and from the angle where you're seeing it from. But if you see it from the angle of empathy, from the angle of people suffering, then we need to take it easy. Like the popular pigeon parlance that um, waiting man do man mm. is always one of our problems in Nigeria. You understand? The dollar is falling right now, and we hope it translates to, to, the, cost to of the cost of living, living cost yeah. of food price, cost of everything. But I see some measures that Ashiwaju is taking right now. And I feel, I think that if we continue, it's tough, but nothing comes easy. Nothing happens easy. You, you can't, if you want to build a good house, you want to live in a good house, you have to really, really take your time to go through the pain. We're going through the pain now. I hope we will survive it. And I hope things will get better. Indeed. I'm optimistic. Optimistic you are. BKO, your thoughts on this? Yes, I mean, my align uh, with, um, with my namesake on what I think uh, tomorrow offers. I choose to have hope rather than be hopeless. Mm. Um, I've seen tough times. And also, of also in good times. I'm confident that the good times will come. And some of the economies that I respect the most in our country, I read stuff about them, they are telling me that things will get better. So I want to believe that things will get better. Some of the people um, don't want things to get better so that they can be in position to say, we told you 
Things will not, not get to better. vote for this person. We told you this uh, Bado man is, they will not achieve anything. <laughs> it's hating your own country mm. and wishing evil for your country. It says a lot about the kind of person you are. Mm. And the question one will ask is, are you human at all? That you can hate your country that much. You don't know that if the dollar, if the exchange rates is so unfavorable. It is not the people in Nassau Rock that suffer the most. The ordinary people will suffer because we are an import dependent nation. Mm. Mm. Drugs, mm. a lot of the drugs that we consume are not uh, manufactured here. Mm. You want exchange rates to still be extremely high. You think it's Tinobu that will suffer. Mm. It's the ordinary people. People should think, use their heads. There's no point wishing evil for your nation. No point. We are eager to, 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 to magnify evil. Mm. That's what I see. But during this time, these governors, these senators, they are assuring Nigerians, they are telling Nigerians to calm down. We appreciate your sacrifices, but things will be better. Let's be patient. Let's not write off the government because it's not all reforms that can bear fruit within nine months. Mm. Mm -mm. People should read about reforms. Mm. Even in Lagos, I am a living witness. I was editor of PM News. Mm -hmm. And we were carrying stories. Jose Kome, I've mentioned it here, Jose Kome, the lawyer, mm -hmm. he described Tinubu as an absentee governor. What does that mean? That because he was seeing refuse all over the place <laughs> when the man just took office. As why you didn't begin to get Lagos right until deep into his second year. Mm. You know? So he called him, in those early days, he called him an absentee governor. And in, in front of our office at that time was one huge refuse. Mm. Uh, people will recall that on the island we had refuse the height of, of a story building. Mm. Yes, now. <laughs> but he came up with the idea of uh, this uh, PSP involvement in refuse uh, evacuation. Suddenly, all those giant heaps of refuse disappeared. Even the one in front of my office back then. My office, our office that time is the present uh, Swiss Association. Um, facility in Ogba. Mm. In, directly in front of us, this tent was always wafting into our newsroom and making life unbearable for us. <laughs> and we had no choice. We would still cross to Shogunro Estate to go and uh, eat rice and beans. Abba. That one woman called uh, Onso Ibo was, uh, was And you could selling. enjoy the meal while we, you... We didn't care. <laughs> we had no care in the world. <laughs> In spite of that stench, we still eat it, you know? Mm. But by the time it began to get Lagos right, all of those things disappeared. Yeah, and we were only seeing liters, liters, liters of refuse replaced. The heaps of refuse. Story building high refuse heaps. Mm. So in the end, the same man who called him absentee governor, at the end of eight years, I'm sure he will not be able to open his mouth and call him absentee governor in eight, uh, after eight years. Mm. These things sometimes take takes time. Takes time, and that's what the governors are saying. Governor Eno, for example, of Akwaibon said, he arose that we may arise, you know? And um, Songwolu urged Nigerians to be Christ-like. And... They express confidence that the president's economic reforms will bear fruits. I'm trying to see what some others uh, said. Okay, Governor Zulum also called for prayers for the development and prosperity of Nigeria. And Shino Pella urged Nigerians to choose love over hatred. So a lot of those good, positive messages came with Easter. And I'm, po I'm pos positive that as Christ defeated death, 
in form of its resurrection, mm -hmm. Nigerians will defeat the tribulations that they are going through at this time. Right. And our country will be on the path of prosperity. And greatness. We will be able to live, and our children's children will be able to live in a happy Nigeria. That is our wish. And as the Lord lives, that wish will come to pass. Some of us, even during the military era, we refused to jackpot. At the risk of our lives, we refused. Uh, no, because we if we so die, we die here. <laughs> we are going nowhere. Some of some of uh, my mates, they ran away. I said, "Me, this is where I'm going to be. If they want to kill me, <laughs> let them come and kill me here." I remember the day that Paulo Yomi mm -hmm. came to meet me. I was in Falikis. I was in uh, um, Ojodu. Ojodu at that time. Akiode. He came in the night and said, "Jide, you are going to write the cover story." Meanwhile, I came to Lagos to hide. After I did a story in Kano, they said they would kill me. I came to Lagos to hide. I did the Akaluka story. They were looking for me. They wanted to cut my head. I came to Lagos to hide. They still gave me a story capable of putting me in trouble. So my younger sister, who is a nurse, said, Master, what is the meaning of this? Yeah? Somebody came here to hide. You are giving him another job that will, that will put him <laughs> in trouble. Danger. And that will on your me. You know, it's, it's always calm. He says, somebody needs to fight this government. And your brother has elected to fight the government. He said, no, no stop giving him. <laughs> I did the story. Still, by the Monday morning, they came to look for me to take me away. Now what happened? I was not in the office. <laughs> they, don't, they don't see me on days like that. I was not in the office. They took my editor away, Kunle Ajibadi, and they jailed him in 1995. Hmm. I was the one they wanted to pick. I couldn't get you at that yes, time. They got, me, they got him in my place. And my dad always prays for him because he knows that it was his, his son's punishment. That he bought. Yes. Mm. He was jailed and sent to Makodi prisons. So wow. if I didn't run away that time, I will not jump now. It's too late to jump I'll stay here. We will rough it here, as they say on the street. <laughs> we will rough it here. Whatever it is, if some people have hope that Nigeria will get better, if there are three people left who have hope that Nigeria will get better, I'm one of those three. Yes, I'm not. going nowhere. I'm confident that things will get better for us. And when things begin to get back, uh, better, I will play this video for those who wrote off Nigeria to remember that we told them, that it makes no sense to write off your country, that your right. country can be better. So right. that's, that's, that's that. Yeah, I, I really share your optimism, no doubt about it, because people, we want to see a greater Nigeria, but the majority of Nigerians are hoping that the government is sincere in terms of cutting down cost of governance. Perhaps mm -hmm. that will put a little bit of hope or belief about this government's sincerity to put this country back on track, wouldn't you think? We are saying they are taking some steps. Mm -hmm to do that. They just announced that they were selling off some uh, aircraft on the presidential fleets, which will help to reduce cost. The cost of maintenance is huge. You know, the cost of keeping them, you know, on mm -hmm. air, very, very big. That's one step. Look at the decision that the president took last, uh, last month about traveling abroad. Yeah. These are all steps that you can take to reduce the cost of governance. And before now, he had also taken some steps. You know, incrementally, we'll see those steps. It's not what he can just do at once. And he doesn't have the power to do what the president of Senegal did mm. when he scrapped the Senate. If Ashwaju tries to scrap Senate here, yeah, because he wants to save some of the money that we are spending in the National Assembly, they will impeach him. Mm. They will impeach him. I'm saying the truth. If he says, tomorrow I want to scrap the Senate, where will he even derive that power from? No, no. It's not, where? It's not possible. And he's not a military ruler. Mm -hmm. So some of these things, I know that as we go forward, he will continue to um, take steps to reduce the cost of governance. But what I want them to focus on more is to see, block leakages. leakages. Block leakages, what we earn will grow. Reduce human interference as much as possible. Rely exceedingly on technology. 
I mean, in, in, uh, talking about our revenue generating yeah. agencies now. Some of them are just there to steal money. We have to block, make life difficult for those out there to simply steal money. Mm. Make life difficult for them. We will earn more. When we earn more, it doesn't need to increase the number of taxes. Mm. Just improve the efficiency of collection. More money will come in. And I know that this government is capable of doing that. All right. With that said, let's quickly move on to our next issue of discussion. Where